The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pants Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. And I'm going to start this episode like I start all of them by saying thank you. Thank you very much for supporting this show. Uh, Thank you for supporting everything we do here. If you haven't subscribed, please, it's a free, easy way to help the channel out. Um, And if you got to have more than I'm telling you, you got to have the Patreon. Go watch the recent Josh Wolf episode where we highlight the lowlights of the Patreon, some of our favor, because it's the honeydew with y'all, and y'all have the craziest stories I've ever heard in my life. It is nothing like it out there, I promise you. Um, And the new podcast, The Way Back, thank you for the support. I'm stoked for it. We have so many recorded already. Very excited to bring that to you guys as well. Uh, tour dates, everything is over at ryansickler.com. All right. That's the biz. You guys know what we do here. We highlight the low lights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. And I am very excited to have this guest on. First time here on the Honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Leah Kreischer. Welcome to the oh, Honeydew. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. It's thank long you. overdue. Oh, well, thank well, you. Well, I, I came to, um, see you guys and do your shows and stuff over there and i was like i got it i want you to come on because i'm going to tell you this i want to give your husband gave me my flowers i'm going to give you your flowers Mm. the wife of the party listen it's it's the best name for a podcast out there it's so creative it's so smart it's so on point it's it just nails it it fucking nails it it's so good thank you it's so good and to be the wife of the party like that I am. Yeah, I know. And yeah. to know the story before the wife came in and all that, like, holy shit. So, Leanne Kreischer, welcome. Please plug, promote everything you would like, and then uh, we're going to get into your story. Okay. Well, obviously, Wife of the Party podcast. I've had it for 300-plus episodes. I Congrats. love my podcast. Yeah. We talk about everything and nothing, and it's great. I just produced my first stand-up special for Shane Torres. Yep. I'm really proud of that. It's on YouTube. You can watch it on Burt Kreischer's channel or Shane's channel. And I think, I mean, I love Shane, but I think we did a really good job. I was really proud of myself. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then, obviously, always Burt, 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 Burt com. <laughs> you know, always be selling Burt, 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 Burt com. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I guess that's it. Wife of the Party podcast. Well, I, I don't know a lot about your upbringing, mm-hmm. and, uh, but I hear, I catch these things from Bert, from Kirsten, from whoever here, there. So I want to talk to you about your upbringing because you're st- where were you born originally? You're, you're from the South, obviously. Mm-hmm. So and here's what else is funny. People constantly tell me I have a Southern accent. Do mm-hmm. I sound Southern to you? No. Exactly. No. And I say that to them. Oh, you must sound to me mm-hmm. like I sound to them mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Right. Right. Um, I draw my O's and my A's, and it's a it's a draw. It's not a southern accent. Like accent's a different hit. No, it's definitely not. Yeah. No, most so, people think I'm from Texas, uh, yeah. but my accent's very different than Texas. But if you're not from Texas or from where I'm from, you just everybody thinks everybody's from Texas. I think. So where are you from? I'm from Bowden, Georgia. Oh, you're from Georgia. Okay. Yeah, Bowden has about 1,600 people. My daughter's middle school had 1,800 people. No, <laughs> so slightly different than my upbringing. The LA yeah. school out here had 200 more people <laughs> than your town. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> than your whole fucking the whole state. town. I remember being there the first say middle school and going yeah this is my entire hometown <laughs> in one building and That's my kids were crazy. like Whoa. yeah it is crazy man that math is hurting my head yeah <laughs> in one building one building so this is an everyone knows everyone in their business town yes okay. joke but true sort of true joke but true and do you have a um, extended family or is it just brothers and sisters all I'm in that the only town child. you're an only child only child and do you have cousins and stuff that live mm-hmm. there though i have cousins i have one other cousin that left actually two cousins that left one is still in georgia and one moved to san francisco everybody else is still there yeah. Um, in that same town? It, pretty much, yeah. yeah. And what is it now? Do you know the population now? Uh, about the same. No way. Yeah. It's about the same. Nobody's moving. They're just Nobody dying going off anywhere. Or having me. No, I know. Yeah. When I was in high school, you know, 
I think four or five of us went to college. We graduated, I graduated with 74 people in my graduating class. So yeah, it's kind of your whole senior class was 74. Uh-huh. My whole senior class, 74. And I moved around with my parents' divorce when I was seven. So, but everyone that I started kindergarten with in that town, I graduated with in high school because I went back there for high school. I see. Um, and everybody, you know, everybody knew everybody. I had like three options for a boyfriend in high school, and they were all my third cousin. <laughs> not, not, not a joke. Or I, my boyfriend in high school, when I finally broke up with him, my dad was like, thank God, you know, he's your cousin. And I was like, what? You could have given me a heads up. Didn't tell you that at all? No, he was like, well, I knew it wasn't going to work out. So I was just waiting for it to fall apart. But yeah. So <laughs> what's mom do? What's dad do? You're an only child and then they divorce. So mm-hmm. tell me about that. Mom and dad were from neighboring hometowns. Um my mom's actually from Alabama, so my hometown is on the border of Alabama. So uh, they were high school sweethearts, got married three weeks out of high school my, after my mom graduated, and my dad uh, is a mechanic. He went to school to be an auto mechanic, had his own shop. My first job was working for him. I, I um, kept his books, and then when I turned 16, I drove his tow truck. You did? <laughs> no. I swear to You God. were telling people? I did. I did. I swear. Were you really? Yeah. Who are you? Who's? Yes, I'd always Let's show as a best you too. Pulling out of the fucking oh, every plate. old man in his overalls, I'd pull up and they go, "Where's your daddy?" And I go, "Well, he's at the shop." <laughs> well, who's gonna pull my truck in? Well, I am. And they were like, "No, you ain't gonna hook this up." And I'm like, "I've been riding wrecker trips with my daddy since I was eight years old." So I'd just hook it up and pull it to the shop, and these old men would get. And do they ride with you in the yeah. cab? Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, "What? I didn't know Jimmy's daughter did that." And I'm like, "Well." <laughs> You know, the good thing about my daddy is I don't think he ever really saw me as a girl or a boy, just as a kid. Mm-hmm. So he never really treated me like, oh, you're not doing that. Like girls that. don't do this, they, boys no. don't do that. Yeah, that good. Not, I like that. No. Yeah. He was just like, if we're chopping wood, you are also. Yeah. I grew up in my friend's dad's junkyard, and it, we had ladies like that, too, like – I'm like, you're going to drive that? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to fucking drive that. I'm like, yeah. God damn it. She would drive the shit out of it, too. Yeah. 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 So 16, you're just getting your license and you're doing that yes, shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I've been driving, you know, because my dad's um, family had a 88-acre farm. So I'd been driving for a long time mm. by the time I actually got to legally drive. But anyway, so my parents were high school sweethearts. My dad was a mechanic. My mom worked in a factory selling men's suits to pay his way through school, mechanic school. And then when he graduated, very liberal of my dad, he said, well, what do you want to do? It's my turn to pay for you to go to school. And she wanted to be a model. So, and she's very beautiful. Um, So he paid for her to go to Barbizon Modeling School. I remember Barbizon. Remember Barbizon? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Went to Barbizon. And when I was four, she went to Chicago to uh, catalog model and just didn't come home for like a year and a half. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> no. Just kind of went a goodbye. Just split and stayed? Just split stayed. and stayed. I think she came home once or twice in that year and a half, but she stayed there. And uh, that kind of was really hard for my dad. My dad sort of unofficially had a bit of a nervous breakdown. Like I remember getting up at for kindergarten and him just just sitting at the table just staring off into nothing making myself waffles and you know he's a great dad but he was just really in love with her and she just broke his heart so when she came back from chicago but also uh, left you yeah so he's watching his little girl without a mom too this dude's without a wife you're without a mom is this okay she's up here (laughs) without a wife without a mom i stayed with her parents a lot Um, her dad suffered from really severe PTSD from World War II and was probably the meanest person I've ever known. Like, got in a fight, hit somebody with like a log and chain in the head. Um, just a real mean, nasty guy. So I was really scared of him. I didn't enjoy staying at their house, but I stayed there till my mom came back. And when my mom came back, she kind of plotted to leave my dad. So, um, that's when the games began with... My mom. Oh, here she goes. Bye, bye. She get out. Bye, you went. So yeah, my mom came back from Chicago. Um, what made her come back? Do you know? I think. Um, I think my dad just kind of stopped sending her money. So he was sending her money to support. He he was fulfilling his end of the bargain. I'm going to support you and get you up and running. 
But at a certain point, he figured out that she was, this was, she was kind of conning him a little bit. Um, so he just stopped sending her money. So she came home. When she got home, oh, this is just so not fun. But she, she had gone to Atlanta, found an apartment, rented an apartment, fully furnished it without telling him. And basically was like, I'm going to leave. And he was like, what's going on? Let's let's have like a, a trial period where we see if this can work here. And she agreed to it while she finished amassing everything and then left him and left him with all the credit card debt and took me to Atlanta. Took you. Yeah, took me to Atlanta, which was really devastating for me because I was on this farm, right? I, I had a calf every summer I had to raise. I worked on the farm. You're all my cousins were out there. So, not yet. Later. Oh, though. Yeah. But I had all these cousins. I was totally surrounded by family. And then she moved me to Atlanta in, um, in, in a community in Atlanta that was all gay men in the 70s because she thought a little girl would be really safe in the gay community. So she moved me into the gay community. And um, and so, did you know you were going? Or did no. you wake up one day and mom's just driving? Uh, I, like, she did you have told any heads me, up? I didn't have a lot of a heads up, but I know she told me it, that I had enough time to give my dad my favorite toy. And he still has that toy. It broke his heart. I gave him the toy that I slept with every day because I, I was, you know, he and I had been inseparable for a year and a half. And then all of a sudden she showed up and everything changed. It was really hard. Um, but after we moved to Atlanta, I started figuring out my mom was not right in that. And this is my opinion. My mother has not been diagnosed with anything that I know of. But I noticed at a young age that she lied quite a lot. And I would catch her in the lie. And, you know, when you're like seven or eight, you go, hey, that's not true. And then when you say, hey, mom, that's not true, I would get in trouble for that. And she would tell me it was true. Um, and then, you know, she started having me steal things from places. Why? Because <laughs> she wanted them and she didn't want to pay like for what? them. Like what? What are we talking about? What like, are you stealing? She really like sugar dispensers. And she like, Dumb shit. Dumb she, like shit. large knives. And she liked large serving spoons in restaurants. So it was always from a restaurant. It was like never what's from- one of her favorite spots? Where are you going? Well, I don't know because we went to Everybody's Pizza a lot. And That's they what had, it was called? Yeah, Everybody's Pizza. Everybody's Pizza. Yeah. Okay. So and yeah, you would she- be stealing shit from there? Yeah. And I hated it because I was like, this is so wrong. How old are you? Eight. Can you? I can't imagine that my kid be like, get that spatula. <laughs> Get just, that spatula. Just stick it down your pants. <laughs> stick it down your pants. She would go, if they catch you, you won't get in trouble because you're a little girl. Yeah. So just put it in your pants. And I'd be like, oh, my God. I'm just going to stack it up. Okay, just keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. <laughs> uh, so there was that. And then she was dating this guy that that we would take suitcases full of cash to the Cayman Islands on a regular basis. So some part of me was like, I don't you know what this dude? is. And her. And her. The three of us. Oh, she was seeing the guy. Yeah, she and was seeing the guy. Along. We were like, here's my little suitcase full of full money. Full of cash. He owned arcades and junkyards. Junkyards, yeah. but I told him. It's cash business. Cash. Yeah. So that was happening in Atlanta. And then my dad's house, my dad was living with two other bachelors in a log cabin that had no heat on 20 acres of land. We had to chop wood. I lived with them every other weekend and then all three months in the summer. So I jokingly say I'm a perfect fit for Bert because I grew up with like three bruh, major <laughs> bachelor party every weekend, women in and out. I mean, it was like a frat house. And that's where I felt really safe because my mom not only was lying, was had a lot of men in and out and um, didn't really have a lot of friends. And I think when I was young, I just was like, something's up here. Like something's not, the elevator's not going to the top floor. Yeah. Um, when I was in middle school, she moved us to a suburb. And I guess I always knew something was really off. But when we moved to the suburb, I had a neighbor across the street whose family was like, oh, no, you need to kind of stay at our house. Oh, really? Like, yeah. They told they sort of like took you in? Yes. And then- What were they seeing? Just the shit that's going on? A lot of yelling and screaming. A lot of- your, At you? Your mom yeah, yelling at you? Yeah. A lot of- um, hardcore criticism of of me of I didn't really 
the way she worked now that I, now that I'm an adult and I've read a lot of books and I've been in a lot of therapy, I really think she had a borderline personality disorder called narcissism as a disorder. That's what I believe. Again, she's not been diagnosed, so I can't say that's factual. But my experience of her, based on what I've read, is pretty much that. So if I if you told me if I said, "Hey, the inside of your mug is green," and she didn't think that was true, I would be punished for that. Just me going, but hold on, that's green. So why am I in trouble? She was very. Um, she made me take like. 21 vitamins every day. I had to drink niacin when I was a kid. She was very controlling of my bowel movements. Like she would monitor my bowel movements and watch me to make sure I had them. Like fuck, like not normal stuff. Yeah, that's not normal. <laughs> like it's at not all. normal. She was naked a lot, like all the time. She was always <laughs> clean. said a lot, then you said like all the like time. All the time. <laughs> like she vacuumed naked. She would really? cook naked. Yeah, she was always naked. She was a model, actually, by the way. She ended up being the highest paid model in Atlanta for like nine years. She was a runway model in Italy. She was like Your a model. Mom? Yeah, my mom. I don't look like my mom. I look like my dad. She's like 5'8", blonde, green eyes, Cher's body, not my body, Cher's body. <laughs> and she would just roll around naked in totally front of naked, you too? always, yeah. Would this be when you had company as well or is she crazy never, enough to keep it together? Remember, I grew up in the gay community. No, <laughs> there's <laughs> no Those kids. guys run over there all the time. Well, there's no kids. I had no friends. Yeah, that's a good point. There's no, no kids. kids in that community. So, yeah, it was – not super awesome. It was really lonely. And I was stuck with this lady who was always naked and so uh, um, obsessive about what I was doing and what I was, you know, eating. She was also kind of macrobiotic. So I could only eat what she told me. So I could she's eat. projecting all that model insecurity, mental illness bullshit on you with the bowel movements and what's going in and out of the body. And it was insane. Man, you're being yeah. regulated like that. She's watching you shit. Uh, yeah, she watched oh, me shit. Man. Now, okay, not to get too graphic, but she would like put newspaper on the floor and go do it. Wait, so, not on a toilet? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I swear. Oh, so she's humiliating you too. Mm -hmm. She's not just monitoring it. Yeah, it was bad. Man, I'm sorry. It was sorry. real bad. And then I had my dad who was just a freaking awesome. And he's just taking it off the floor and be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. No, he was just like, what can we do today? Let's go, you know, take a dune buggy up the side of a mountain. Let's go look for rattlesnakes in the wood. You know, and he's listen, just fun. That's, what, that's interesting to hear you say that's where I felt safe. You're talking about rattlesnakes and yeah. dune buggies and ladies in and out. And yeah. you're like, this is where I that felt was good. safe. Oh, listen, we had to build a chimney on this log cabin to heat it, right? So we had one fireplace only and it was in the living room so to heat the bedrooms my dad was building this like wood burn burning furnace that he actually ducted through the house but we had to build the chimney so there's one mountain in our hometown called blackjack mountain and blackjack mountain is covered in rattlesnakes so me and my dad and his roommate got in his jeep and put a trailer on the jeep and <laughs> My dad would turn a rock over and Doug would shoot the rattlesnake that was under the rock and then they'd hand the rock to me oh, to put in the trailer. Fuck that. <laughs> fuck that chimney right now, okay? And then you I'll pick the rattlesnake it. up I'll and throw it. shiver on that. <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> That's also one rock. That's one That's rock. One rock. Yeah, know. you got a lot more rocks. We did that like four weekends in a row. Oh, hell, you get all the rocks to build this hell, damn chimney. Bro. Yeah. One oh, summer gosh. I had to dig a ditch because the the basement was flooding and I had to dig a ditch that was the length of the house and the width of the house. How old are you doing this shit? 12, uh, 13? 10. Like, oh, younger. 10, 11. Mm -hmm. He bought it in 1980. You're digging a trench around the uh -huh. house? For Yeah, that's what we did. Bunch of beer, a little bit of something on the radio. Dig, dig, dig. Cut wood all year. And I was so happy to be there. I would have done anything not to be at my mom's house. And you're only getting the weekends mm -hmm. and then the summer. And the summer, yeah. But Monday to Friday is mom. Yeah. Naked mom. Naked mom. Who's just torturing you. Yeah, it was pretty rough. Man. So yeah, my when I'm middle school, we moved that family across the street. They were moving and the dad called me in his the kitchen and he was like, hey, I, I actually can't leave you here. I, I'm building a house. I'd like to build a room for you. I'd like to legally adopt you if that's okay with you. And I was so embarrassed because I thought, oh, my God, they found out, like, they know that my mom is not right. It was really embarrassing. So I was in eighth grade, 
And actually, when when my mom got custody uh, custody of me, the the judge was like, at thirteen, she can choose wherever she wants to live. So I knew I was going to move with my dad after eighth grade. So I said, thank you, you know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna live with my dad. But that was probably one. Is of that the, right? Thirteen is when 13. you can do that. Mm-hmm. So you decide on your own. Okay, sorry, I interrupted you. That was pro- that was one of what. That was what that was when one of the hardest moments is that I someone saw me and saw um, that it was rough. You know, you can kind of pretend like everything's okay. I don't have any siblings. It was just me and her and a cat. So you could just kind of act like nothing's I'm good. I just got to wait 12 days to get two days of normalcy with my dad. Then I wait 12 more days to get two days of normalcy. And that's got to make it to Memorial Day. And then I got three months of normal. Sharon, Judy Garland for fucking 12 days. You know and here comes dad. Here yeah. comes daddy. So I got a question that just popped in my head. I want to mm-hmm. ask and I want to get back to you. But um, raising your girls, mm-hmm. even though we're out here and your life is so different, have you seen the little Leanne in their school? Have you seen that girl? You know, have you been able to identify one where you're like, I'd like to, or have you helped anybody like that? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah. I have a Girl Scout troop, you know, I've had for 13 years and we had a girl in that troop that all, I have two other leaders. All three of us were like, mm, this girl needs all of us, needs everyone here and needs the three of us adults in particular. And at some point, um, she, she stopped coming. And we tried everything we could to get her to keep coming. And, I mean, to pick her up, to drop her off, just whatever we could. And um, couldn't make it work. Here's the thing. I was the kid. Like, I felt like uh, – so after my dad died, we were 16. Like, everyone – it was right at Thanksgiving. So all of a sudden, there's this bunch of donations, anonymous donations, Christmas presents, clothes, from all, all the wonderful people who meant well. Mm-hmm. And all I could feel like was a fucking charity case. Mm -hmm. And I was embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I was humiliated. I was angry. Like, fuck these sweatshirts or fuck these Mm -hmm. people in there. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't mean that. But I was just like, this. I don't want any of this. This isn't what I want or need. And I've been able to do that, too, in in a few times in life where I'm like, oh. And it's also scary. Mm -hmm. I remember being a kid like, why should I trust this one? This one fucking is trash. Oh, yeah. You know, and then for you to have these three ladies that wanted to look out for you, it's also a little bit um, nerve wracking to be like, do I give my trust in these people? Absolutely. You know, know, it's hard to believe someone can love you when the one person that's supposed to doesn't know how. Amen. She she just doesn't know how. I mean, what what causes narcissism as a disorder is serious childhood trauma, which I believe she had. I mean. Her dad was a disaster. He was an absolute meanest, nastiest man I've ever seen until he got diagnosed with PTSD and got medicated. And then he was actually really great. You really saw a difference? I, are you kidding? Wow. He would, oh my God, I would hear him hit the front porch screaming and cursing at my grandmother. Where's my goddamn lunch, May? I mean, from the minute he walked on the porch. And when he got medicated, he just started crying. He cried and cried and cried and cried. But he was, you know, he was on Hiroshima 30 minutes after they dropped the bomb. And his job was to find survivors and take them to medic. Oh, my God. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, come on. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. How do you come back from that? How do you how do you raise three children and be kind and soft. You can't and, do yeah, that. Yeah. He was just trying to not see Japanese bodies all the time and didn't tell anybody until I was in probably uh, probably till I was eight or nine years old when he finally got diagnosed and then started getting treatment. That's who raised her. Mm-hmm. So you go, well, I understand why she's broken. And I... I have no hard feelings with her. I've I had all that when I was younger. I really forgave her for a lot of stuff. But but when you decide to choose your dad, mm-hmm. do things well, get even worse with her, or is it just cut off cold? Like how does that go down? Well, this this starts because you make the choice. Yes, I do. Uh, this starts phase two of my and her relationship. Really, phase two is you're dead to me. 
I don't see or talk to her for like a year and a half or so. And then she, I was a cheerleader in high school. She just showed up at a ball game, like nothing happened. And then I'm a teenager going, well, I guess, okay. So I guess we're making up now, you know? That's just how it was. This, just poof out of nowhere. I'm at this game. Yep. Not I'm coming. Nope. No heads up. No. Nope. just That nope. is narcissistic as fuck, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Just to show up. Yeah, show up like that. Especially was when she you, naked. <laughs> no. <laughs> she may as well have been because, you know, she was this big fancy model coming back to her small hometown. Oh, and I this see. is like it was That's as right. if this Cher came, right, to my ball game. Um, so yeah, then I just started in a, a relationship with her again because she's my mother and it went on till 23 and then. Can I ask you another question? Mm -hmm. This whole time that you choose to live with your dad, mm -hmm. how far in proximity is mom? A couple miles? Like Atlanta, how far is Atlanta from that? Is About 50 it? miles. So all right. 55. So an, an hour. Yeah. So oh. not three states over. No. Like if wanted to, could totally. absolutely have had a relationship with her daughter. Had to drive through my dad's hometown to get to her parents' house. And did do that. Oh, I'm sure she did. So she bounced to Chicago and now she's staying in Atlanta and both of you now. Nah. Bye-bye. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So did I mention she's been divorced six times too? <laughs> You forgot the six marriages. <laughs> she was working on number seven, but I think he might have got wise and got out early before he got <laughs> trapped. Six. Yeah, she's six divorces. She ain't healthy, y'all. <laughs> she just ain't healthy. Bless her heart. You know, I don't want anybody. I genuinely would hate to 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 be as angry as she is mm -hmm. and live her life every day that angry. That's just not any way to live. You know, that's mm -hmm. it's really sad. It breaks my heart for her. But yeah, she uh I was dead to her for a while and then she came back and then we, you know, were si sort of okay for a little bit and then I was bopping around in college. I was miserable in college. We didn't even talk about the, the redneck stuff I grew up with that I'm sure Bert's taught you about. That's the stuff I want to talk to. Kirsten's told me some So should I too. stop talking about this because that's way more fun? <laughs> no. No, we could talk about we'll do, we'll get to all of them. We're not in a hurry. Did Bert tell you that when my dad first met Bert, he was living in a convenience store? Yeah, that's what uh, he told us. Yeah. Went from Bert's the log like, cabin. I could live here. <laughs> I could live it here. Was, <laughs> okay. First of all, okay. When I first started dating Bert, okay. I said to him, I'm a little concerned about you meeting my family because I don't he's from pretty white collar, you know. He's from Florida, which gives it a different element. Yeah. But, I mean, dad's a lawyer. Mom's very educated, um, was an educator. Her parents were like, they're just white collar people. I am not from that big time. And I was like, oh, my dad's actually currently living in a convenience store. And that was but from up from the cabin? Yes, from the cabin. Yes. My dad's currently living in the convenience store. And <laughs> my grandfather wears overalls. Every day of the week. I mean, he has a Sunday pair for church and then the regular pair for, I mean, like, and definitely is an old school Southerner, if you know what I mean. Really nice man, but very old school Southerner. And I was like, how in the world am I going to make this happen? So I kind of prepped Bert on the way to Bowden, uh, explaining my family. A couple people might cook meth, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> one or two have some missing teeth and that's why so just buckle up and as you know just hope for the best and we went in that convenience store and in the middle of the convenience store is a pizza oven and Bert was like there's a there's a pizza oven in here wait a minute you mean you go through the beer cooler and on the other side of the beer cooler is my dad's apartment which has no windows so it's pitch so black said, but he had a great couch he, he had a great <laughs> couch <laughs> the couch reclined and he also had a recliner and Bert was like, hold on. You mean you can get up any time of the night and go in the other room and get snacks? And then my aunt also worked there who makes the best biscuits ever. And so as soon as you wake up in the morning, you can have like biscuits and gravy and mm. whatever you want. He thought it was a dream. Met my grandfather, Haskell, uh, who was the best storyteller I've ever been around. And as you know, Bert is one of the best storytellers and my pop just told him stories all day the first day they were inseparable and i was like okay well that's working my dad's working just avoid the two toothless cousins in the corner <laughs> yeah, and we yeah. can get out here unscathed but yeah when my dad first met bird he was like i'm gonna tell you something boy that's the best frog gigger <laughs> in the county is leanne 
<laughs> and Bert was like, what does that even mean? What does that mean? Well, we used to, when, when I was a kid, we would we didn't have any money, so we would camp a lot. And my grandparents had this farm that had a river on it. So you get in a John boat, a flat bottom boat mm-hmm. with spotlight, and you just frog gig all night long. You just reach in the bank and grab frogs. Some people do it with like a pole, a forked pole, but we didn't do that. We'd just grab it with our hands. You just trolling along and just snagging just them? Just grab it with your hands. And then what do you do with it? You put it in the well of the boat, and then you eat them. Oh, you do go home and eat them? Yeah, we eat frog legs. Yeah. Fry them up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I've had frog legs. They're not bad. They're not bad. They're not bad. They're fine. It yeah, was fun. Fine. Yeah. I mean- as bizarre as that may sound, that was so was by the way shooting rattlesnakes out from under rocks. Was yeah, fun that, too. to build a chimney, to not build a just, chimney, not just for fun. <laughs> yes. To build a chimney, it was a purpose. <laughs> to build, yeah. It was to build a chimney. It worked, and then we finally we had heat. That's what you. Had. It was freezing in that house. I don't know anybody had to do that to get heat. Kill uh, rattlesnakes. Oh, we did have a snake that lived in our log cabin. So we had a rat snake that lived in my dad's bathroom because what's better to take care of rats than a snake? And most people don't really understand that perspective. But my family always had snakes because they take care of rats. And we have a farm. Yeah, you have a farm. You kind of need that. So anyway, I had that too. That was kind of bizarre. Get started on your resolutions with Factor. Their ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals, plus over 55 weekly add-ons to choose from, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, and more, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to pick through. Factor now even offers loads of snack options like breakfast, smoothies, juices, and more to keep you going no matter what's on the schedule. When things get hectic, Factor is flexible. Change your order up every week with plans from 4 to 18 meals per week or pause and reschedule your deliveries anytime. Head to factormeals.com slash honeydew50 and use code honeydew50 to get 50% off. That's code honeydew50 at factormeals.com slash honeydew50 to get 50% off. Do you ever feel like money is just flying out of your account and you have no idea where it's going? Well, I know it's all those subscriptions. Think about it. Between streaming services, fitness apps, delivery services, parenting apps, it's endless. I'm guilty of it, so I used Rocket Money to help me find out what subscriptions I'm actually spending money on and which ones I had been forgetting about for months. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash honeydew. That's rocketmoney.com slash honeydew, rocketmoney.com slash honeydew. The Farmer's Dog was founded by two dog lovers who decided to reimagine pet food from the ground up. In the five years since they delivered their first meal, the response has been incredible. The Farmer's Dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. It's developed by vets, it's nutritionally balanced, and it's made from real, healthy ingredients to human food safety standards. It is the best option for dogs at all life stages because it's not kibble, it's not canned goo, it's just real, healthy Food. Not only that, it's also pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. This makes it easy to help your dog maintain their ideal weight, which is one of the biggest indicators of a full, healthy life. It doesn't matter if your dog is young or old. It's always the right time to begin investing in their health, helping you live more healthy, happy, and full years together. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash honeydew. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to farmersdog.com slash honeydew to get 50% off. That's farmersdog.com slash honeydew. Now, let's get back to the dude. 
What else? I used to drag race for money in high school. Where? Hog Liver Road. Like just on the street? Yeah. <laughs> yes. There yes. wasn't a track. There wasn't a quarter mile track. No, just, no, 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 no. Did you just say Hog Liver Road? I did. <laughs> Oh, yeah. our, our intersection. Is that the straightest uh, yeah. spot to do it? It's kind of in a holla, so you, uh, yeah. it's very straight. Hog liver up. I'll tell you what right now, motherfucker. <laughs> I'll see all that hog liver up. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's no way to say that. It's, not, it's real, though. It's real. People don't believe it's real. It's real. My, my intersection of my street where so my dad's good. farm, my grandparents' farm was called Bug Scuffle. So you'd go to Bug Scuffle and take a right. <laughs> on the was, hog liver? Uh, off right? of Bug Scuffle? On Dot Road? Is yeah. that right? It's Dot Road, yeah. I love this. Anyway. So, um, all right, how much are you winning? You just going like 50 a pop or what? Are you just drag racing against all dudes too? It was all dudes. Are you the only totally. girl oh, like in the group of every uh, guy? 100% yeah. the only girl, yeah. yeah. I was the only girl all the time. I went everywhere with my dad. And he did dad stuff. He went to the tractor pull. We went to Demolition Derby. Um, I want to go. I can't find one. A I Demolition have, Derby? I've looked Irwindale looked. Speedway? Every other month. Out it is here? awesome. Yes. In Irwindale. I yeah. go. I take Isla all the time. Every other month? Every other month. I'm definitely going. I want to take my daughter so bad to that. So fun. All right. It's called yeah. the Night of Destruction. It's a different kind of redneck. It's freaking awesome. We used to awesome. go to these tracks. It was a place called 75 and 80 because it was at the intersection of 75 <laughs> and fucking 80. And the rednecks, all the fat guys would take their shirts off. And then it was locals that would bring their Nova in or their souped up uh -huh. Camino or whatever. And they would warm their tires up and light them up here. And these guys would be like, woo, and stand there and let those little pieces of gravel and rubber just all over them. And they would stand there like that. I'm like, what the fuck are you all doing? It's a different kind of mentality, redneck, right? Mm -hmm. I remember in high school, the boys used to stir up an ant bed and stick their hand in it for money. Whoever could leave their hand in it and longer it got in there the money. And, and you're like, what? <laughs> I mean, could you imagine some L.A. kids doing that? <laughs> Fuck no. No way. No. No way. No. Yeah, that was often done. So that's, so dad moves, at what age are you living in the convenience store? Are you never? I you never are, did. So you grew up in that cabin? I did. Uh, my dad and I did build a house from the ground up when I was about 14. So we moved out of that house into the house that he and I built. You literally built a house together. I did. I didn't put the roof trusses on and I didn't. I'll do the electrical wiring. Um, but but I you built him. your shelter. Mm -hmm. My dad and I did, yeah. My dad and I taught me. Dad, My daddy was the handy real deal. Handy as fuck, it sounds Still like. is. Very handy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, handy's an understatement. Bet, he you like, those, bet your mom's looks are long gone, but dad's <laughs> skills still around, <laughs> motherfucker. I still got these. That's the truth. <laughs> He's the best. He's the sweetest and the best. I would not be this person without my daddy, for That's sure. That's great to hear. Would not be this That's person without my daddy. No way. So, yeah. Um, yeah, he and I built that house. We lived there for a little bit, and then we moved back into the log cabin because we didn't like it. We liked the cabin better. So we moved back. And did you have your own room? Mm -hmm. You did. Okay. It was a big cabin. It actually was like a four-bedroom log cabin. Um, and he had, like I said, he had the, the roommates. So I had and were the, those were good dudes, by the awesome way? Awesome dudes. Are you all still in communication wedding. with anybody, all of them? I could be. I'm yeah. not. But, I mean, when I got married to Bert, I um as I don't have my mom, I drove myself to my wedding in a pickup truck. No, nah. I did. Did you really? <laughs> I did you drove yourself? <laughs> I did. I didn't think about it. You know, I think the thing is when you grow up by yourself, the way I grew up, you just don't think about it. You just do because you need to do, and if you don't, then no, nobody's don't coming done. to drive. That's right. Nobody's coming to drive that motherfucking truck. That's not. It's true. Cause, you know, and all this crap with my mom. My dad is such a sweet kind of. As much as he was a party guy, he was a really fragile guy, like emotionally really, really fragile, kind of like Bert, really sensitive, some anxiety issues, which, you know, back in the 70s, you didn't know what that was. But yeah, he he uh, remarried when I was 19. He'd been with her since I was about eight. And um, she left him. And when she left him, he had a, a he had a legit nervous breakdown and moved into the dorm with me in my college. No. Swear. Oh, hold on a second. You my can't roommate just moved say out. That shit like it. You tell me after your dad's second divorce, he moved into your college dorm. <laughs> 
Bert had to move in with the Reaper. He did. He did. He did. He did. Bert had to move in with the Reaper. Bert would, though. He would. He would just be like, Georgia, move <laughs> over. Would, There's no way he could make it. I, it's the same person. There's no way. It's not a mystery. I married this guy who's uh, the most fragile frat boy on the planet. That was my dad. I mean, my dad was a frat Your boy. Your dad but. moved into your dorm? It was How'd rough. How'd you get away? <laughs> I it, was it was fucking, fucking rough. rough. It was rough. He's not moving in for party time. No, he's not. He was moving in and crying. How'd you get away with it? He was crying a lot. He was crying a lot. He would sit on the couch in the dorm lobby and just <laughs> wait for me. So I can't imagine seeing this poor man just sobbing. And you're trying to fucking live your life and be in college. You're finally out of the house. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was pretty oh, bad. Shit. It was pretty bad. Um, I got away with it because... Um, I was in, I was in a Wait, street. what school did you guys go to? It was West Georgia College. Oh, it's now University yeah. of West Georgia or West Georgia University, something like that. But yeah, so in my home, mm. it, it was pretty close to my hometown. I was in a sorority and you couldn't live in a sorority house because it was considered a brothel. If okay. a certain number of women live in a house together, it was a brothel. So we had a dorm floor. So my my sorority dorm floor was all my sorority sisters, and I just explained it. I was like, "Listen, I don't know what to do. My dad's in pieces." So my roommate kind of moved out and moved in with her boyfriend, and my dad moved in her bed. I don't remember how long he was there. Like maybe a month. You have like bunk bed with your dad, it or was, like the it two, was twin two twin beds. beds <laughs> <with> my dad. <laughs> oh my god. It's got to be the saddest fucking thing to Poor see. Poor guy. Just to be a fly on the wall and see your look on your face and he's over there sobbing and shit. He's sobbing. You're trying to study. It was awful. <laughs> you know, I'd get out of school and he'd be waiting for me on the couch. And then he'd want to go, like, drive the streets of the city drinking Budweiser looking for his wife. And I was like, oh, my God. It was bad. Bless his heart. You know, <laughs> now I would, oh, I would man. never do that to my kids, but I guarantee you, if oh. I did that to Bert, Bert would definitely be moving in with Georgia, hundred oh. oh, percent. So God. sorry, Georgia, you didn't inherit your dad. Oh, so funny. Yeah. So for a month, that's a long time. It honestly. was a long time. I was a sophomore. What made him finally say, "All right, I'm fucking out of here"? You meet the semester else. ended. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not that deep, bud. The semester <laughs> ended. It was over. Time to go home. I was sure he met someone new. No, no, no. He, no, 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 no. He didn't meet anybody new for a long time. Oh, but, you know, shit. time time heals all wounds, I guess. He just kind of got over it, and I moved to Atlanta. I was oh, like, I got to get out. I got to get out. too good. That is crazy. Too good. Crazy, crazy. So now you're in Atlanta, but isn't that where mom is? I was living with my mom again, because remember, at 13, we reestablished mm-hmm. our relationship. I moved in with her at that point. God, there's a lot about my life, I guess. I would started drinking when I was 13. And by the time I was 20. I'm surprised it wasn't I know, sooner. right? <laughs> I'm surprised it wasn't sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm Hurry shocked up. I don't drink anymore. I mean, I do drink some. But yeah, by the time I was 20, um, I'd had a DUI. I'd gotten arrested for vandalizing people's homes. What were you doing? I was throwing rocks in windows just for just fun. Bashing just to fucking do it. I was angry. Mm-hmm. I had DUI, um, and then still drinking. My 21st birthday, I drank like a, f- a fifth of vodka by myself. I was drinking that much. and then, That was like a regular thing? Uh-huh. It was pretty regular. Point. Wow. And then I started losing my hair. and um, From the drinking? Mm-hmm. And I started bloating really badly, and then uh, moved to my mom's because uh, I was in bad shape, and I was getting away from the situation with my dad, and my sorority had actually done an intervention on me and told me I needed to go to rehab, <clears throat> kicked and stripped me of all my offices in the sorority. And I was like, fuck all you people. I'm moving and moved to Atlanta to get Your away from it. like, we're out of here. <laughs> right? We're fucking out of here. We're me going to East Georgia. Exactly. <laughs> so then my mom took me to the doctor and the doctor was like, this is from alcohol. Her liver is actually quite enlarged. And I was like, I don't drink. I don't know what you're talking about. Totally lying. Um, kept drinking, kept driving drunk massively. And then I woke up one day I was just driving and I was like, this is, I'm not happy. I'm massively unhappy. And I don't think it has to do with alcohol. I think there's something else wrong. Like I'm really unhappy. 
So I dropped out of college. My mom's fourth husband at the time was very wealthy and said, what do you want to do? I'll help you any way you want to help. Want help. He's the nicest guy ever. And I said, I think I just want to move to New York City and just take like a year off college and just figure my shit out. I need to get out of Atlanta. I didn't make any friends in Atlanta. So I was like a boy in a girl's body in the South. Like you have to be sort of girly. And I just, you know, was raised by three men really. So I just couldn't find my way there. So I was like, well, I'd love to go to New York. And he said, well, I'll pay your rent for six months, just your rent. And you take care of everything else. And then, uh, you know, I'll sign the lease over to you or you move or whatever. And I was like, that's amazing. Thanks. Did that then and stopped drinking entirely. I was just like, I'm just going to stop cold turkey and figure out why I'm so unhappy. So I moved to New York and shortly after that got to therapy. Shortly after that, my mom decided to reinvigorate her modeling career and move into my apartment with me. Come on. Wait, first of all, Two questions. How old is she at this point when she's reinvigorating the career? I'm 23, so she'd be 43. Okay, so it's not the end of the career, but it's going to be a different career. It's not the runway uh, young fashion model anymore. No, nope, but she now got it's JC Penny and Sears. Yeah, and it is right. Yeah, I know. That's Wayne right, Brian. Uh, totally. Yeah. But you know, she's beautiful. Right. She's blonde. She's tall. She's beautiful. Okay, but. Now she's coming to your place. She, I had a studio apartment. And is that leverage because husband number four is paying, paying for, for it. it? So she's like, fuck you. I'm coming and staying at your shit. Correct. Man, you can't get a goddamn minute to yourself. You ready? It's still better. She starts fucking the neighbor across the street <laughs> and says to me, you got to lie to my husband about this. And I said, I'm not doing that. I don't lie for myself. I'm not lying for anybody. No. So we get in a fist fight. In my own apartment, and she kicks me out of my own apartment. No, you got in a fist fight with your mom. Mm-hmm. I did. I ha- I hit her actually. I had just had Where? so you much. Get her? I hit her first in the middle of the chest with my fist. You punched like I that. I just huh? punched her, All and I wanted fucking... to knock her down. That's what I was trying to do. Just knock her down. And she didn't get knocked down, so I just kept shoving her and shoving her and shoving her until I got. I I just had to. I just. Went, hold on, I am out of control now and I need to leave. So I left and she let me be gone. So she set a bag out and I was out of my own apartment. I was about 10 days. I had nowhere to live. So I just went from like lobby to lobby to lobby in apartment buildings and just kind of went, yeah, I got a friend that lives here. I'm just going to hang on the couch till he gets home or whatever and would nod off and sleep a little bit. And then uh, I was trying to be an actor because I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So I was in acting class. Coincidentally, with Miss Georgia, and my teacher was like, something's going on with you, and I don't know what it is, but what's happening? And I told him everything that was going on. Coincidentally, my mother had also joined my acting class. Get the fuck out. Is it really coincidentally? No, it's not coincidental. That's right. No, she okay. joined my acting class, which I went to my teacher and went, please no. So he put her in a different one so that we weren't actually in class together. So he knew who I was talking about because he taught her also. And um, went to Miss Georgia and said, can you let her sleep on your couch until and help her find a place to live? And she did. Stephanie Michelle's. I will be very grateful for her forever. But I also, like you were talking about being embarrassed, once I finally got up on my feet, I was so embarrassed that she'd help me that I, like, was an asshole to her. Mm. And years later, found her and apologized to her, wrote her a letter and was like, I just... I just don't, I didn't know how to accept help. And I was so embarrassed. Um, But yeah, and she she and I are fine now. We're, you know, not friends, but fine. Um, But yeah, I lived in uh, Spanish Harlem for three months, scared out of my mind. This was in 93. So it's a little different than it is now. From basically Alabama to Spanish Harlem. Yes. I remember getting off at the Port Authority. I'd never been to New York. I just moved there. I just thought it, it's, it, it's not working here. Let's just go there. And uh, the Port, you know, 42nd Street was like peep show, peep show, peep show, triple X movie, nudie, nudie, prostitutes everywhere on 42nd Street when I first moved there. Dead bodies in Alphabet City everywhere. It was like, it was before they cleaned it up. So it was really pretty rough. But I ended up living there for like four years. But yeah, my mom, when she kicked me out, I was dead to her then too. So it happened at 13 and at 23. And then I got 
subpoenaed to court to testify on my stepfather's behalf because she claimed all these things that were not true. And uh, other things happen. I, I don't feel comfortable saying here, sure. but I'll tell you later if you want to know. It's but wait, you, you had to go to court against your mom. Yes, but she settled the night before I had to testify, so I didn't actually have to go. Okay. But there's nothing worse than walking through an airport and someone saying, are you, my name's, my first name's Kelly. Are you Kelly Kemp? Yep. You've been served and open it up and find out you have to testify against your own mother. And you were in the course. airport where they got you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Man, the Atlanta how the fuck airport. you can't do that shit anymore? Not anymore. Yeah, they not were right anymore. outside the gate. Yeah, not anymore. This was 93 or 94. Yeah. So <laughs> that happened. And so we split up for a while. And then I went on with my life. I moved to LA. I met Bert, fell in love with Bert. <clears throat> and, uh. Uh, Bert and I got pregnant on the pill. Um, no, nah. swear I was on the pill. Got pregnant. We'd we'd been dating for like over a year. He already bought me a ring. I didn't even know it, but we got pregnant on the pill. So my mom wasn't talking to me then either. Uh, we had gotten back into talking in uh, my twenties, but she was mad at me because I wouldn't do something she wanted me to do. So she wasn't um, responding. I kept calling her and going, "You need to call me. I need to tell you something like really important." Never call me back. Emailed her. You need to call me. I need to tell you something because I was going to get married. We like had shotgun mar- marriage. We got married in like two months. She never called me. So finally, I sent her an email. I said, listen, you're not calling me back. So I need to tell you I'm pregnant and I'm getting married and I want you to know and I want you to come to the wedding. And the email I got back from her. Email, on, first of all. An email, email was so bad that I printed it out and gave it to Bert's sister and she cried. And I went, I am keeping this email forever. Because I will never, ever forget how sick she is. So in the email, again, she said, "Uh, you're dead to me. I don't want to know you. I don't want to know your husband. I don't want to know your kids. You're so disrespectful for telling me in this manner and whatever her crap was. And that's the last time I really had contact with her. I saw her at her dad's funeral. And uh, How long had it been? Oh, long time. And she did bust in on, I, I always brought the girls to see her parents because I wanted them to know their great grandparents. Mm-hmm. And I had a good relationship with them. I mean, shit, who has great grandparents anymore? Right? Yeah. I mean, they just lost my mom's mom like a year ago. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, everybody has babies young in the South, y'all. So, you know, but. Yeah, she busted in on one visit with them, literally walked in the door just like my cheerleader. Hey, y'all, I'm your nanny. And my kids were like, uh, George was like eight. She'd never seen her before, ever. And then I saw her again at her dad's funeral, and that's it. I don't know. What was that like? It was, you know, we were. Did you talk at all? We were cordial to each other. She introduced me to her sixth husband there. Um, And. uh, and then, coincidentally, my dad's mom had passed away within a couple days, so her funeral was the following day, and she showed up at my grandmother's funeral, who I was very close to, and did one of these, pulled me outside and uh, with my kids, gave my kids each a gift, and then proceeded to lecture me about respect in front of my children and how I have no respect, I have never had any respect, I don't know how to respect and how disrespectful it was for me to come to her dad's funeral. And uh, my kids were like, what? I actually talked to my kids about this not long ago. I was like, do you remember that? And Georgia said, yeah, I just thought she's crazy. And I went, "Mm, mm, might not be. And you held it together. You don't believe fuck you, lady. No, I just go, okay. After all these years, you're just at that point like, all right. It's not even worth it anymore Mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. It's like almost this is going to if she ever hears this, she'll be really mad. It's almost like when a homeless person is talking nonsense to you and you have sympathy and you go, oh, yeah, totally. I completely. Yeah, there are definitely aliens in your tent. hundred <laughs> percent. I yeah. agree. Yep. You probably should look into that. Yep. That's kind of how it is because she's just so not on this planet. But how's dad? Like, how's your relationship with your it was dad? amazing. My dad comes out here every three or four months. He's taught my kids how to build stuff, you know, how to fix their car, how to, you know, he built all the mic stands out of wood in our whole studio. He and I build furniture together all the time. We have a great relationship. And I take my kids back. He has a house on the lake in Alabama. We go there every summer. They, um, Bert adores him. He adores my dad. He's just the best. He's great. He's he's been with his he's not married but he's been with his girlfriend for twenty three years now. Oh, wow. They're happy. He's got three sort of stepkids with her, so he's good. He's all good. 
So do you like, look, there's no way you can tell your kids like you don't even know. You know what I mean? Like, because they they'll never get that. Never. I mean, even no offense, kids who aren't in the situation your kids are in. There's there's no lower middle class kids out there building their own motherfucking chimneys. No, it's probably not. You know what I mean? Like, that's. That's way different than anything. So how do you like how do you balance that with your kids? How do you or do you find yourself overdoing it, overcorrecting? Like how do you do that as a mom? Well, I take them home every summer and for 2 weeks since they were born. And we float the river, we frog gig, we build stuff, we we sleep on the ground, um not on a cot like I did growing up. I when we went camping, we didn't have a tent. What do you mean you slept on the ground? We in put the, a sleeping bag house? on the ground. No, like when we go oh, camping. When camping. Okay. Um, so we do that. Um, we take a dock bath. You know, uh, when we're at the lake house, we soap up on the dock and jump in the lake, and that's a bath. You know, so that's what I grew up doing. So as much as I can, you know, my cousins are walking around no shirt, pistol on their hip. There's always snakes in the river when we're in the river. I mean, they've my kids have seen my cousins shoot a snake. Um, you know, so I try to give them that, that little two-week window of what that part of the world is like. Because what I feel like, too, is we, we, L.A. is such a bubble. It, it's not really, it is a reality, but it's not the only reality. And my reality was amazing I, I, in so many ways that I couldn't possibly give them here. So like we we went to Montana with another family that's born and raised in L.A., uh, originally from Boston. So super city people uh, went to Montana and there was this convenience store that had taxidermy literally on all four walls, like on top of the freezers, like everywhere. And her two kids were so flipped out. And my kids didn't even really notice it because when you go back to my hometown, that's the way it is there, too. Mm-hmm. And I had to explain to her kids, you know. Hunting is not what you think it is. In my community, you actually eat what you hunt. I mean, I grew up eating deer, and we grew everything we ate on the farm. We had cows and pigs and goats and chickens. Oh, you would eat those too? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. You're not just using them for dairy and all that. No, we weren't a dairy farm. No, yeah. So they had a cattle farm. They had 250 head of cattle. But he would always put one cow up for our family, and he raised pigs for the family. He raised chickens. And goats how, for the um, if you a butcher yeah. takes a cow, how many like how many people could that one cow feed? I don't know, but it, but it filled up a big freezer. Yeah. My grandmother would saw it out a long right? time. Yeah. Steaks and burgers and yeah. everything else you can get the fuck out of that thing. Yeah, and the pigs. Yeah, and my pop had his own smokehouse, so he smoked everything. There was a dairy farm down the road they would trade with. Uh, grew a whole big vegetable garden. There's very little they they bought very little from the store. So I feel like I have, I feel like I got the opportunity to have the last little window of this old Listen, world. That's the way. most fucking L.A. upbringing these people want. You know what I mean? They that's, all want to go. Fucking they think they want farm. it. That's right. They all want to go farm to table and this and that and that. And you're really fucking doing that shit back then. You're like, oh, you're gonna kill this cow because we're gonna fucking eat this thing. You know these chickens, these fucking mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, they that, don't know. That's the I whole know. fucking mm-hmm. woke bullshit out here. They all want to be like that, and not one of them's like that out here. It's so hard. That life is so hard. But here's and, what I like about what I what you're saying. I actually, love about it because you're saying it's so hard, but you also said you loved it. No, oh, I did. I loved it. You every didn't minute. hate it. Uh-uh. You didn't. You don't. You don't uh, tell your kids like fuck seeing that part of the world because you don't. Yeah. No. I really like that you embraced it. No, we we've. They've definitely seen us like clean fish, fillet fish, like right out of the lake. And I don't think a lot of kids get the opportunity to see that either here, you know. Yeah, I love the way I grew up. I would not trade. I actually wouldn't really trade my mom either because I learned a lot about human behavior from her. You know, knowing when someone lies, I'm pretty good at that because, you know, you read your mom differently than you read other people. And when you can see those kind of inconsistencies in your mom, it makes you feel unsafe. And that unsafe piece you can spot in other people very quickly. So that's a a good tool. I also have no ability 
to filter things because she filtered everything. Everything was a con. And I just went, I will not be doing that because it's so unsafe. Because you go, well, are you asking me to do this? I was just saying this to Bert. I remember when in high school, she gave me a really nice purse. And my instinct was to give it back because the purse was too expensive for me. So what she would ask me to do because she'd given me a gift was mm-hmm. too expensive. I don't want. I don't, I don't want what comes with that uh, gift. Exactly. Yep. I know that. So then it makes me give gifts with absolutely no attachment. I don't even care if you like it. Me too. Throw it in the garbage. Me if you don't too. Like it. I don't give a fuck. Take it no. back. Return. I don't yep. give a. Sh- you're not going to hurt my feelings. Uh. Uh-uh. Doesn't work like that for some other people though. You realize. No. <laughs> you're like, oh, you're really upset. Oh, that's my bad. <laughs> I don't, Sorry. Worst for Bert. Bert gave me. <laughs> Oh, my God. The worst. He gave me a gold velour tracksuit. What part of me looks or sounds like I would wear a gold velour tracksuit? He is six foot two with a belly. He'd look great on him. And I opened it and I went, oh, man, I'm never going to wear this. And he has never forgotten it. So I was like, this is not, I mean, gold jewelry is one thing, but an entire yeah, velour, velour, velour suit. What is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I, mean, I can't just can't buy gifts for you ever. You um, listen, thank you for coming on here oh, and doing this episode. Before we go, yeah, I want to ask you advice you would give to, because this is interesting. I'm curious what you're going to say. Advice you would give to 16-year-old Leanne. I would say. Wait, what's your name again? My name's Leanne. You My s- first name's Kelly. Kelly, and what was your maiden name? Kemp. So what advice would you give to Kelly Kemp? Uh, uh, I would say it's, I don't know if it's advice or maybe like, just it's all going to be okay. I was such a mess at 16. It's all going to be okay. Because I am so happy and balanced and fulfilled and at peace with the things I was not that way about at 16. I think that's what I'd say. It's going to be okay. That's great. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think about the things I thought about at 16 and how much it meant. Now I'm like, God, if you only knew how it means nothing. Nothing. I mean nothing. 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 Um, thank you very much. Please plug and promote anything you'd like again. Just Wife of the Party podcast. Shane Torres is special. Yeah. Uh, it's called The Blue-Eyed Mexican on YouTube. All right. Thank you very much. As always, Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week.